Now, a couple of months ago, I came on this channel and did a video talking about how I thought the WrestleMania 33 card was looking really blah. And I was hoping that things would change. I was hoping that it would shake out to look better. But now that the Royal Rumble is clearly in the rearview mirror and I start to look ahead, we can start to better piece together what could potentially happen at WrestleMania. We've seen some reports about what the rumored WrestleMania 33 card looks like. We've graduated far beyond blah, in my opinion, and we've got it into straight doo-doo category. This card looks like doo-doo. Dookie, poopies, shit, whatever you want to call it. It looks like all of it. It's fascinating to me that you can have an entire year knowing that WrestleMania is ultimately your biggest payoff. It's your biggest show. And you're going to trot this potential card out there. Poor utilization of the title belts. Awkward fitting in terms of Performer A versus Performer B. Uh, some of the matches chosen are just kind of head-scratching. Just all in all, this looks like one gigantic clusterfuck to come. And at this moment in time, I'm not looking forward to that Sunday night for WrestleMania having to spend almost five hours watching this card. I mean, this looks absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. I really hope I'm wrong. But to me... This show looks like it has the potential to be the absolute drizzling shits. That just really leaves a lot of fans pissed off and wondering why the hell they bothered, and furthermore, why the hell they would continue to bother wasting their time and energies with the WWE. Let's take a look at what the rumored WrestleMania 33 card is as of right now. And again, I'm saying rumored because this is not definitive, this is not fact, and things can still be subject to change. You know... You have Elimination Chamber Fastlane shows coming up. That's where WWE can position some things and make these things final, but they could also change their mind. And clearly they've changed their mind, and we believe they've changed their mind. And Vince, being the senile old coot that he is, is prone to changing his mind at a moment's notice because that's what old senile people do. But here's what we're looking at right now. In terms of confirmed matches that you would expect to be on the main card, or let me, rumored matches you would expect to be on the main card, because again, we're going off of rumor. But boy, there seems to be a lot to these rumors right now. United States Championship match between Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. A fatal four-way for the Raw Women's Championship with Bayley, Sasha Banks, Nia Jax, and Charlotte. Big Show versus Shaquille O'Neal. If he's healthy, Seth Rollins versus Triple H, John Cena and Nikki Bella versus The Miz and Maurice, because of course, what better utilization of John Cena and The Miz than to give Nikki Bella a victory in potentially her swan song match in WWE. AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon, The Undertaker versus Roman Reigns, a WWE Championship match with Randy Orton, the Royal Rumble winner, taking on the WWE Champion, Bray Wyatt, and then a WWE Universal title match that looks like it would, for all intents and purposes, end up being slotted as the main event, the closer to the show, that's Brock Lesnar versus the Universal Champion, Goldberg. Why don't you think about this card for a second. Owens, Jericho, Bailey, Sasha, Jax, Charlotte, Cena and Bella versus Miz and Maurice, Big Show versus Shaq, Seth Rollins versus Hunter, Taker versus Roman, Styles versus McMahon, Orton versus Wyatt, and Lesnar versus Goldberg. Think about that card for a second, and think about whether that really truly screams out to you a WrestleMania card, or something that is worthy of a WrestleMania, or the type of card you would want to trot out there for a WrestleMania. Again, this is WrestleMania. This is supposed to be your biggest, most important, significant show of the year. You have communities bidding against each other for the rights to host this crap. You created a WrestleMania week where you have an NXT TakeOver show. You have the Hall of Fame event. You have access. You have all these different damn things. And this is the type of show that you could potentially trot out there. 
And at this point in time, it would seem like these would be the nine matches that would be most likely to be on the main card. Because if you look back to last year's WrestleMania, which by God lasted almost five fucking hours, this company had exactly nine matches on the main show, one of which, mind you, out of that nine, came about via a promo segment between The Rock and Bray Wyatt, which amounted to The Rock, oh, he's dressed to wrestle, squashing Eric Rowan in six seconds so that way the Wyatt family could come after The Rock just so that way John Cena could come out to save the day because we've got to get Cena involved in Mania somehow, some way. It just wouldn't feel right. Now it's The Rock and John Cena. They were once foes. Now they're friends. Oh, my God, the possibilities. What could happen next? That was one of the nine matches. In almost five hours, you had eight full real matches. And now you look at this year's card. I mean, Owens versus Jericho, there is at least story there. And you would think that that match would prove itself to be potentially worthy of being somewhere on a WrestleMania card. I'm okay with that. A Raw Women's Championship match, okay, whatever. Get one of the women's title matches on the show, that's fine. John Cena and Nikki Bella versus The Miz and Maurice. Your best way to utilize John Cena and The Miz is to put them together in a match where it becomes as much about the women as it does the men. And it ultimately becomes about the women because you would assume Nikki Bella would have to go over in her last match. A lot of people are concerned about whether Seth Rollins, because of his so-called knee injury, is even going to be able to work at WrestleMania. So what the hell happens if he doesn't? But let's assume that he does for the moment. Then you got Seth Rollins versus Triple H. That's one of the few matches that I'm actually still excited about. But the WWE slow played this too slow to the point now where they're starting to ramp it up. And I'm not nearly as interested as I should be because there should be all types of natural storytelling here. This should be easy. It should be a license to at least print a little bit of money. Praise God. And it, it just doesn't feel like it should. One of the matches I'm actually the most excited for on this entire card is Big Show versus Shaq. I want you to think about that for a second. And I know I'm not the only one. One of the matches that most feels like it belongs on a WrestleMania card is Big Show versus Shaquille O'Neal. Big Show versus Shaq is one of the most exciting matches for me on this year's WrestleMania card. AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon has possibilities, but I can't say it's exactly a match that gets me really excited to think about. The Undertaker versus Roman Reigns? The Undertaker versus Roman Reigns. So Vince McMahon has decided to back off of doing The Undertaker versus John Cena because we'd rather see The Undertaker versus Roman Reigns. You have a limited amount of matches left for The Undertaker. Clearly, especially with his dad bod. I'd want to make as much money with him as possible. And now, granted, I get the thought of trying to work with a young guy and trying to get the young guy to go to the next level. But how much more do you need to throw at Roman Reigns? I want to get as many dream matchups out of The Undertaker as I can. One of the few remaining big-time fresh matchups that he could have at WrestleMania. If it's not going to be somebody like Goldberg, it has to be John Cena. And furthermore, you had all the pieces in play. You had Cena win the belt at the Royal Rumble. You had Taker in the Royal Rumble. You could have had Taker win the Royal Rumble, and then you're setting up to John Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Still being able to keep some potential element of intrigue there, because if you had Goldberg win the belt at, what is it, Fastlane, or Brock Lesnar win the belt at Fastlane, Taker could potentially want to come after one of those guys as well. But instead, we're going to throw him at Roman Reigns. Now, the funny thing is, is Roman could be the type of guy that could actually have a good match with The Undertaker because Roman, Roman doesn't have bad matches. It's just people just don't like him. But when I think of a match that should be on a WrestleMania card or should have been put together, this is not one of them. I think this is a poor utilization of both individuals. And then you look at the WWE Championship match. Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. One of these guys belongs, and it's not Bray Wyatt. So we've screwed the pooch on Bray Wyatt for so freaking long that all of a sudden at the 11th hour, because Randy Orton won the damn Rumble, we're going to sit there and throw a world title on Bray Wyatt? 
a guy who has the inverted Undertaker streak at WrestleMania, he can't fucking win. So now we're going to have him be the WWE champion heading into that show? If this title match, and now again, this is not just any title match. This is one of your two world titles, which in and of itself is a problem because you have two world titles because of the brand split. But this is still a world title. And furthermore, this is the WWE Championship. And even if it's on the B show, this is still the A belt. You're going into the biggest show of the year with one of your two world title matches being Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. Give me a fucking break. If this doesn't feel like one of those May-June type of title matches or October type of title matches, I don't know what does. This feels like that type of third-tier WWE pay-per-view title match where you're just trying to kill some time to get to something you give a fuck about. But instead, the company looks well in position to potentially give us that at WrestleMania. Not Randy Orton versus John Cena for the 900th time, but this time it counts on Breakfast Club extravaganza. So that would officially mean that Randy Orton would have wrestled Bray Wyatt one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania more than John Cena has in their careers. That is ridiculous. And for all the bitching people who do about Orton versus Cena, at least that would feel like a WrestleMania world title worthy match, would it not? Because of the names involved and the investment put in the characters over the years. And furthermore, I really need it for this channel. Because, my God, I've got so much material for the next two months if the WWE was smart enough to give me this fucking match. It'd be gold, gold, gold. And then the universal title match that looks like it would be the main event of Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. It'd be cool to see Goldberg get a short title reign, but what? For why? So that way Lesnar can win the fucking belt? We've been down that path before. That was a fucking train wreck and a half of a goddamn disaster. And you want to main event this match? Where you had Goldberg squash Lesnar in just over a minute and a half at Survivor Series and then quickly eliminate him at the Royal Rumble. Now we come into a situation where you're expecting these guys to go out there in the main event of your biggest show of the year and deliver? I remember when they had a WrestleMania match in 2004 where they were one of the featured draws on the card and they were expected to deliver. And they gave us Brock Lesnar versus Bill Goldberg at WrestleMania 20 with Stone Cold Steve Austin as a special guest referee. This is the main event that you have for WrestleMania. This is insane. Like, for me, if I'm thinking about it, I would rather see if Cardo... And that doesn't matter all the other matches that don't even have room on the show because of the way WWE horribly manages their time. Like, they're pointing to, like, Braun Strowman versus Baron Corbin, potentially... You know, it's a match because of the investment in the two characters and time and energy and resources, especially with Braun Strowman. It should be on the main WrestleMania card. It probably would get kicked to the pre-show. But you got a Raw Tag Team Championship match, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, a SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, the Cruiserweight title match, the Intercontinental Championship match, the SmackDown Women's Champion. You got too many fucking belts, too many matches to try and fit this shit all in. You're going to end up with four hours of goddamn pre-show and six hours of main fucking card. And all the while, you still might not get everybody involved that should be involved in the way that they should be involved. For me, if I look at this main card, this is kind of what I would think of. Finn Balor or Austin Aries versus Neville for the Cruiserweight title. Give, give the hardcore indie nerd something to jerk off to, but it would feel like a WrestleMania-worthy Cruiserweight match. And you can let those guys at WrestleMania go out and perform like the Cruiserweights are fucking supposed to. You want to make it a triple threat? I don't give a shit. Because it could make sense with both Finn Balor and Austin Aries. And if Aries can't go, then Balor. If Aries can go, but Balor can't, then it's Aries. And if both of them can go, fuck it, just throw both of them in. Who cares? To me, instead of doing that four-way for the Women's Championship, give me Nia, Nia Jax versus Charlotte and make that the squash match on the card where Nia Jax squashes Charlotte in under a minute because you want to get her over. You want to get her over in a big way, and you want to mercifully end that ridiculous streak of Charlotte's of not losing the pay-per-view. This is the way to get people's attention. I still want Big Show and Shaq because, again, it's still one of the matches that interests me the most for this year's WrestleMania. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope Seth Rollins and Triple H still happens because, again, this is one of the other matches that I was excited for the most at WrestleMania, and you can still do that. But instead of utilizing Shane McMahon and AJ Styles together, I'd rather split them off. I'd rather have AJ Styles versus The Miz. 
and I'd rather have Samoa Joe versus Shane McMahon. Or if we want to flip the script a little bit, we could do freaking Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles, The Miz versus Shane McMahon. Either way, it fucking works, and works so much better to be than The Miz being wasted in a mixed tag match with Cena, Nikki Bella, and Maurice, and AJ Styles being thrown in with Shane McMahon. Either way, it works. You can still do Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt if you so desire, but in no way, shape, or form does this match deserve to have the WWE Championship on the line in it. Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg, you can still have this match on the card. You have Brock Lesnar get his revenge, but again, while it'd be nice to see Goldberg get a short title reign, I don't want to see that mean that Brock Lesnar gets his own title reign, especially because there's no money in the bank when they're fucking floating around here. Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg should just be a traction match on the card and not a main event for one of the two world titles. The two world title matches should be Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns because there are a lot of pieces in, pieces in place that would make sense in all of this. Furthermore, when you look at how massively Braun's been pushed, you wonder if he would actually beat Roman. I have some confidence that Roman could actually get a good match out of Braun Strowman because Roman has a lot of good matches. And frankly, when you look at it, at the end of the day, Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns wouldn't be main eventing WrestleMania any damn ways as a world title match because that honor would go to The Undertaker versus John Cena. I'm sorry, at the end of the day, you could joke about dad bods all you want. You could talk about injuries and looking old and looking bad all of you want. But if all of my chips are on the line and I've got a WrestleMania main event that I need to deliver and send the people home happy and make them feel like, wow, this was an extravaganza of professional wrestling sports entertainment and one of the best shows I've ever seen. If all of my chips are on the line, are you going to gamble on Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg for a world title? Or are you going to gamble on The Undertaker versus John Cena? We've seen Lesnar Goldberg much more than we've seen Taker Cena. Furthermore, when you talk about unique attraction type of matches, and again, for all we can say about Lesnar and Goldberg and some of the possibilities, keep in mind, this is technically a match that has happened at WrestleMania before. Taker and John Cena has not. Now, granted, if the streak was still intact, it's no decision here. We know the match that you have to go with. But at the end of the day, what feels more like a WrestleMania main event to you? Even for the Cena haters, even for the Brock Lesnar nut huggers. Lesnar Goldberg, you've done before. And you've done it before at WrestleMania, too. The Undertaker versus John Cena is arguably the biggest money match that this company can have at this point in time. And it feels much more deserving of a WrestleMania main event because there are so many elements at play here. There's the what if factor. There's the holy shit, is Cena going to beat Taker? Oh my God, is Taker going to beat Cena? Hell yeah, is he going to get one last run with the World Championship? So you can get away with Braun Strowman versus Roman as one of the world title matches because at the end of the day, nobody's going to give a shit because everybody's going to be thinking about the other world title, the one that really does matter, the WWE Championship match with The Undertaker and John Cena. It's interesting to me when I look at this card overall because... I feel like the WWE is really dropping the ball and really missing the mark. But just a couple of subtle tweaks, and I could think, Mwah! this card looks magnificent. This feels like a WrestleMania type of card. This feels like a type of show that could potentially really deliver. Because right now, I look at what they're giving me, and this shit looks like doo-doo. Straight doo-doo. You're going to have this long-ass show with far too matches that go on far too damn long. You know, so much crap crammed onto the pre-show. And just in a world title match with Bray Wyatt walking in as the champion. Having AJ Styles wrestle Shane McMahon. Wasting John Cena in The Miz because of Nikki Bella. Where the fuck are the priorities here? Unbelievable. I can't believe this company's had a year to plan this out, and this is the crap that they came up with. Do, do.